Good All right, cool. Holtz, let's get us in this offensive line. I got to work at five in the morning. I'm getting oh, tired. Oh, offensive line. All right, let's do it. Offensive line. There's some things happening with the offensive line. Andy Herman did a state of the Packers offensive line. I got to say this, you guys. No, I'm going to say it at the end. All right, I'm just going to say it right now because it's the only thing that matters. Lucas Patrick is freaking awesome. I don't care. Look at all the Packers offensive linemen. I looked at the stupid PFF grades. I looked at all this stuff. Somehow they got Billy Turner with a higher PFF grade than Lucas Patrick. Like, I don't get it. I don't get it. The thing, I don't have the subscription or whatever, so I can't see how many QB pressures they gave up, but apparently Billy Turner only technically gave up one sack this year. Uh, I know Rodgers got a lot of sacks. He got away from a lot of sacks, but come on. How many uh, how many pressures did those guys give up? Lukey Patrick is awesome, and he got benched, and then he came back and started the next week and was awesome again. And you know the other thing? Go and watch Aaron Rodgers' 2020 season highlights, this extended version. It's like 22 minutes of highlights. It shows a bunch of completions from every game. But don't watch Aaron Rodgers, and don't watch the receivers. Watch the offensive line on that whole thing. And you will see, you will see my man, Lucas Patrick, winning on -on one-on-one blocks, handling his business, and you will also see him as the only Packer when he doesn't have a guy to block. When he goes to help somebody, he freaking helps. He lays dudes out. None of those other guys do that. Not Pro Bowl Elton Jenkins, not Pro Bowl Corey Lindsley, not Pro Bowl David Bakhtiari. No. Lucas Patrick is the only guy that plays like that. And that's why he's the best Packers offensive lineman. I don't give a crap what the PFF grades say. I don't care what anybody else says. He is the best. He's the first Packers jersey I'm going to buy in 25 years and maybe the last. So when Andy Herman, Pack-A-Day podcast, I'm going to go on myself now. When Andy Herman, Pack-A-Day podcast, says, Lane Taylor looked great before his injury. Yes, he did. I love Lane Taylor. When he says, Corey Lindsley and David Bakhtiari, the heart and soul of this offensive line, the anchors, they were phenomenal, really well as run blockers too, and phenomenal. When he says, Elton Jenkins played really well, but he's not dominant yet, but his versatility is incredible, but he has room to grow, but he's still really good already. Then he says, Lucas Patrick was had Jekyll and Hyde moments this season. Really solid. Solid is all he gets at right guard. And left guard, he really, really struggled. Well, I looked. The left guard games, he played three in a row. It was Detroit, Carolina, and one other one that I can't remember off the top of my head. Either way, you have to look at the competition you're playing in those games and the guys he was matched up against. And there were plenty of plays he did do well. So if you want to look at Billy Turner's tape every play, and you want to look at Rick Wagner's tape every play, and you want you to don't say, want to do that. You don't want to do that. And you want to see how many times they struggled versus how many times they won. I guarantee you, Lucas Patrick, even in his crappiest game, won more times than those guys won in any game, their best game. Now, then he goes from that. Jekyll and Hyde, Lucas Patrick really, really struggled at left guard. Rick Wagner was Really, really good up until the Bucks game where he finally struggled. No, he was not really, really good. And Billy Turner played, quote, really well. At left tackle and right guard, he struggled. But at right tackle, he's a starting caliber right tackle in the NFL. Quote, Andy Herman, pack a day podcast. Number 32. Bull. He's a starter, number 32. Bull. Shh. You don't say Jekyll and Hyde about the best Packers offensive lineman, Lucas Patrick, and then say that crap about those guys. Andy Herman, ban yourself from the internet or redo that video.
done. Not sure what uh what there is to add on that. <laughs> no, I you know, looking ahead to next year, I don't obviously once Bakhtiari comes back, he's gonna be the left tackle. You don't spend that much money on someone and not count on them being the guy for the next however many years. For whatever reason, they're convinced Billy Turner is is the answer at right tackle. I don't know why they'd be bringing him back, but they haven't cut him yet. And with him playing as much as he did this past year, I think we're going to see him at right tackle come summer. I, so I, I, like it or not, that's what you're going to have at the two tackle spots. Corey Lindsley, uh, you know, especially once we got into the playoffs, it seemed like there were a lot of bad snaps from veteran centers that were just going over guys' heads. And, you know, I remember thinking to myself, you know, we don't see that with Lindsley. Does that make him worth eight or $10 million or whatever he's going to want? I don't think so. Um, yeah, the guy's been solid, but I don't think they're in a position to be able to pay him what the market's going to be going to be for him this year. So I think you need to plan to move on from him. Um, does that mean, you know, they're looking to bring in a, a, a new center, but, you know, keep these guys that they have at guard. I'd like to see Patrick Jenkins would be fine. You know, with what they have now, those two guys are guys. I think they should try to hold on to um, Lane Taylor. If you want to bring him in as, or hang on to him as your backup guy. Great. I don't know if any of those guys can play center. I'm not saying that he's great, but I think he's a good backup. Patrick, I think Patrick's your center this year. Let Lindsley go for the money and plug him in. Yeah, I think that would be a good move. You know, because he knows how to help out. I just told you, Jesus, when he helps out, holy crap, he helps out. Sorry. Oh, that's fine. You know, I looking at guys. I was just looking at guys who are becoming free agents or are free agents now that their contracts expired and it's really slim pickings at tackle. And as I said, they got Billy Turner, so they're not going to be looking to bring someone in for, you know, whatever veteran minimum even they're going to get, you know, good number of guards on the market, but it looks like there's a lot of veteran centers that are coming off their first contract. So if they're going to bring someone in, maybe they'll be able to find a, a guy coming in kind of cheap. Um, Given the cap situation this year, it, I think it's there's going to be a lot of guys who are going to be able to pick up kind of cheap as the, the offseason winds down. There's going to be guys looking for homes. So I guess what I would like to see is, like you were saying, you know, try to establish a starting line with what they have in-house. I think they got guys that can are versatile enough. They can move someone to center. You know, have a couple of guys, you know, Taylor Jenkins, whoever, play guard and you're hopefully Runyon or someone, one of these young guys will be able to step in if Billy Turner gets hurt this year. Uh, But I don't see them parting ways with him until his contract is up. And I hope when his contract is up, they're smart enough not to re-sign him. But uh, I think we're going to be stuck with him at right tackle for this year again. So I don't, you know, you said Josh Nyman barely saw the field. I don't like it, Rick. Hey. <laughs> they yeah, need I don't... to spend a pick on a tackle. First well, round pl- or second round him. needs to be an offensive tackle to play right tackle in the future, if not right away. Which makes they Billy don't... Turner a backup, you know, whatever. They can't they go through the scrap that... anymore. They had guys like... – I don't know why we didn't see more running this year. I don't either. I know, you know th- these young guys certainly could have done any worse than, than Wagner and, and Turner were doing on the right side, or especially once Bakhtiari went down. Well, when they drafted Runyon, a- everybody kept saying, well, well he, we're moving him to guard, we're moving him to guard, we're moving him to guard. Okay, that's fine if you're going to move him to guard. But when you have all these injuries at tackle and you have a guy who played freaking tackle in college who is used to doing it, Get them in there when these other guys stink, and they didn't do it. And it's 
it's all over the field where they just they just made mind-bogglingly stupid moves yeah. by playing time with certain players at certain positions, which are all the positions we're weak at. Corner, freaking inside linebacker, defensive line, offensive lineman, and then our fourth wide receiver. Same thing. They need to here, – here's the thing. The reason why they need to go over J.J. Watt is if they sign J.J. Watt, that fix the defensive line. Then they don't have to try to draft somebody. Okay. Then they can use their high draft picks for a corner or offensive lineman. Or for some reason, if a really fast, awesome inside linebacker falls down to them in the first round, please take them. They probably won't. But what we do need is the line, a right tackle of the future and another corner besides Jair Alexander. Because right now we've got nobody. But. That's what needs to happen. They need to get a. They need to draft a guy, a talented, athletic player who's good. Now, if they can find another Dave Bakhtiari in the first round, fourth round out of Colorado or whatever, awesome. I don't know if they can, but they need to do something because they can't keep doing what they've been doing, drafting these guys in the fifth, sixth, seventh round, and then hoping that one of them's good. They did it wide receiver. They did it running back. They did it offensive line last year. Every you know every year they're like okay. We really need to have a guy who's going to be good. So we'll wait to see what the, the, the board looks like. We'll draft the best player available. And then when we get to the fifth and fifth, six, seven rounds, then we're going to draft three guys at our need, need spot and hope that one of them is good. And we got lucky that Aaron Jones was good. They drafted three wide receivers, and two of them were crap, and one of them can't catch half the time, though he is a playmaker. And by the way, one of these days, we need to do a show about uh, MBS. Because when you look at his stats – I compared his stats to a whole bunch of other receivers this year. He's looking freaking pretty good. Let's do it. He only had 33 catches. He still had 690 freaking yards and six touchdowns. He should have had weight. He should have had like 10 touchdowns and like 850 yards. But anyways, his numbers are insane compared to a lot of these other receivers in the league that they say are so good. But I don't want to get into that today. Now the show. I, I would agree with that. I don't think – I don't see Green Bay going first – probably even second round on an offensive lineman. No, oh, uh, that's what Double Doink wants. He wants Alex Leatherman. Or Leatherwood, excuse me. Or Leatherman. Sorry. I want Alex Leatherwood, but I don't know. Manwood. I don't know if he's going to be available. Uh, I just, you know, Green Bay has never successfully done that that I remember. Uh, you know, but. What? Okay. Brian Balaga, he's so great. He was so great. <laughs> yeah. Terrible Tony too, right? Uh, Ross Verba, John Michaels, Derek Sherrod. We went through all oh, great, great, great oh, tackles. Not yeah, good. So that that's my my point. So you know, if, if go for a, an impact player first or second round, see if you can get a linebacker, receiver, whatever, someone that can come in, and you know you have a chance to develop and get playing time while they're developing. That's not something you can do on the line, right? I mean, you can't rotate guys at guard or tackle to give them some playing time. That just doesn't work, even though apparently Green Bay was trying to do that with their musical chairs offensive line this past year. Uh, you know, so if they draft these guys to develop them, you know, fine, mid-round pick, let them sit for a year or two. But then at some point they need to see the field if you're going to have them develop. So you draft what, three offensive linemen in late rounds and keep them around in case you need them and never let them play so they don't have any experience you don't know if they're actually good or not and you're in the same situation another year or two later so i i would like to see them take a tackle you know, early mid rounds third ish i mean turner's got what one more year is he free agent after this year you guys know two years yeah, he was signed for four years, same as Zadarius, same as Preston, same as Amos. Were they all four-year contracts? I yeah, they're so, all right? four-year contracts. Oh, yeah, yeah. Who did that? Oh, yeah, okay, best GM of all time. So, um, <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, if you, if you draft a guy now, if you take a first rounder, you're going to let him sit and not play at all for two years and then hope that he's good, learns the third year, maybe plays the fourth year, and then – Here's the thing, what? though, Rick. He's got to play. Bakhtiari's hurt. So you have to draft an off, uh, offensive tackle in the first or second round, and he needs to play. 
even if he stinks, he'll get experience. He'll be able to, you know, get something out of it. And then you can ship Billy Turner out of town because this guy maybe would learn and be good. And then you, and when Bakhtiari comes back, because Bakhtiari is not coming back to like what, week 10 or something. He's, I mean, ACL, that's going to be a whole year. That's like 11 months. So, I mean, Green Bay will put, they have put the Jenkins. Lineman. They have nobody. Like you said, Yash Nyman or whatever his name is, is he going to play? No. Runyon Bunyan, they don't play him at freaking tackle. They should. Jenkins is okay, the, but why would you move the tackle if he's good at guard? That's probably what they'll do, though. So they'll probably slide Jenkins out to tackle. Maybe let Runyon or someone plug him at a guard until Bakhtiari comes back and then shift everything midseason and expect it's just going to click. That's dumb. I don't like draft, it. That's probably draft what they'll a do. a good player and get him entrenched in the offense at the position so he's ready to go. Period. I can tell you one quick thing here. Dude, wild man dude, who celebrated his 74th birthday last week, has said numerous times, he's been clamoring for it. He's like, the Badgers have had all these offensive linemen come to the NFL in the last 25 years or whatever, right? And the Packers don't draft a damn one of them early, except they fall into Mark Tauscher in the seventh round or whatever the heck it was, right? Well, Cole Van Lannan from Green Bay, Wisconsin, he was, uh, so he's a, I think he can play tackle. He's 6'5". He got a PFF grade, one of the highest PFF grades of any offensive lineman at 90.8. Now, I don't know how much I can put into that PFF grade based on the fact that they rated Billy Turner higher than my man Lucas Patrick, but that's the, the metric there. He also was first team All-America. Uh, he was second team All-America 2019. He was 2020 first team All-America and second team All-America from the AP Pro Football Focus. Maybe it's time to give the Badgers lineman a shot since we suck at drafting so many offensive linemen all the time. He was trying to give Cole Van Landen a shot, a dude from Wisconsin, from Green Bay. You think that guy's going to be excited to be a Packer and play his butt off? Give him a shot. Guys that know how to run block? Give him a shot. I know wild man dude back me up on that. That's the other thing. Who's our running back going to be? A.J. Dillon. A.J. Maybe Dillon. it's time we get some big offensive linemen from the from the Big Ten, like Runyon Bunyan, and we get this guy from the Badgers who's used to run blocking a lot so that A.J. Dillon's got a place to go. Aaron Rodgers can work off that play action. He had 21 touchdown passes off play action last year. Matter of fact, the Packers ran the most play action passes in the league, and Aaron Rodgers was number three, I think, or number two in – uh, average yards per attempt or whatever it is, area, area yards per attempt. 